Welcome back, Chemistry Theory. So this is part two of the EQ 2.3 section. So we'll look at a few examples now, three different examples dealing with solubility, solubility pro product constant, etc. So here we'll look at calculating the KSP if we know the solubility. Okay. So we have a solid silver chromate. Solid silver chromate is added to pure water at 25 degrees C. And some of the solid remains undissolved. So what that means is that we've reached a saturated solution. So I'm just going to draw that. So here's our water. Here's our age silver chromate. Chuck it down here. So, of course, it's going to dissolve and recrystallize. And it appears that there's a solid sitting on the bottom. So we've dissolved the maximum amount that we that we have, that we are capable of at 25 degrees C in this amount of water. Um, and of course, it's not just sitting there. It's continuously dissolving and recrystallizing. But the net effect is that we have solid on the bottom of that uh, beaker. The mixture is stirred, stirred for several days to ensure that the equilibrium is achieved between the undissolved silver chromate and the solution, so the silver and the chromate ions floating around. Analysis of the equilibrated solution shows that the silver ion concentration is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4. Assuming that silver chromate dis dissociates completely in water and that there are no other important equilibria involving silver ions or chromate ions, calculate the KSP. All right, so what we have to do first is write the equilibrium equation. Okay, so it breaks down. So we'll have silver floating around and chromate ions. Look at your pink periodic table. You'll see that it has a negative two. Then of course here, since silver silver's plus one, chromate's two negative, we need to have two silvers. Now, how we handle this question and all these questions is very similar to what we did in the first part by making an ice chart because we're going to look at initially what's going on what the equilibrium scenario is and then we can look at the change that's happening so we're going to break it down into this an initial amount change and equilibrium okay so initially now we're told we're told that the silver ion concentration in equilibrium is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4 Okay, now initially we had silver chromate, we chucked it in, so we wouldn't have had any of this. But of course, as this equilibrium happens, silver chromate breaks down to silver and chromate, we get it being formed. So we'll get some additional amounts, some additional amounts. And we're, not untold, we're not told anything here about solubility, because for the most part we won't really care about this or this. We'll want to know how much is being dissolved what is the solubility so in this particular question we're not given solubility not given solubility how much is dissolved we're not given that okay but hey we can figure everything else out with the information that we have here so over here to go from 0 to 1.3 of course silver increased by that amount then of course if we use a little bit of stoic here we can figure out what change happened to the chromate ions. So for every 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4, uh, uh, I guess I could call it moles per liter of silver. If I look at the mole ratio here, for every 2 moles of silver that's formed, there's 1 mole of chromate that's formed. So here, moles of silver and moles of silver cancel, and of moles per liter of chromate ion. So you can see that, 2, 1. So this has to be in 2, 1 as well. So this works out to be 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per liter of chromate formed. So, and you can see that this number is half as much because it's really 0.65 times 10 to the minus 4. But of course, to put it in proper scientific notation, we move the decimal over. So 6.5 times 10 to the minus 5. So there we go. So we have this, and that's going to be going into the KSP expression because it's the equilibrium amounts. 
So Ksp is equal to silver ions multiplied by chromate ions. And of course, it's a rate, we have two silver ions for every one chromate, so that's gonna be an exponent of two. So we'll have 1.3 times 10 to the minus four, 6.5 times 10 to the minus five. And that's gonna give us 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. So that's what we get there. Now, if you look over here, we could figure out the solubility here. One makes two makes one. So if I have 1.3 and 6.5, I know now that the smaller solubility has to be in line with what's happening with the change here. So I could say, therefore, the molar solubility of Ag2CrO4 is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 12. I guess I need to put a molar there too. So that is gonna be the same thing. One to one ratio with CrO4, because it's the same, very similar to what we had previously. So same ratio there. All right, B. Well, look at this. This time we do have the molar solubility. So it'll be kind of be, it'll be reversed of what A is really. This time we're dealing with calcium fluoride. It's when we talked about it in the last video. So calcium fluoride. So when we, th and always imagine what's really going on here. So we have a beaker of water. We're throwing calcium fluoride in there. Okay, when we're assuming it's gonna be a saturated solution, meaning that I've dissolved as much as I can. And I know that I've dissolved as much as I can because I have solute on the bottom of the beaker. So calcium ions and fluoride ions. And of course here, every calcium is two plus, every fluoride is worth two minus. So yes, I need to have two fluorides. Okay, so we'll set up the little table here again. Move it up so you can actually see it. There we go. Ice. So initially we would always have this, unless we're told something else. You'll see in the next uh, section that we will have common ions, etc. But we'll take that on when we need to. So we initially just had water. We threw some calcium fluoride. We didn't have calcium or fluoride ions initially. But of course we know that we're going to be the calcium fluoride that I dump in there is going to dissolve and make calcium and fluoride ions in there. Now, what I'm told here is that the molar solubility is 1.24 times 10 to the minus three. So that's really how much is getting dissolved. So notice I don't have the initial, I don't have final, I don't really care about that. All I need to know is how much is getting used up, how much is breaking down. And of course, from there, one, one, two. So using the stoic, I can figure out the change that's happening here. So if I don't worry about the negative, that just simply tells me that it's getting used up. So I, if I have 1.24 times 10 to the minus three moles per liter of calcium fluoride, I can use the stoic, one makes one. One mole of calcium fluoride makes one mole of calcium. So. 1, 1, 1 1.24, 1.24. It's going to be the same thing, right? Because it's 1 to 1 ratio. Uh, I guess I'll stick to moles per liter calcium. So moles of calcium fluoride, moles of calcium fluoride, then I'm left with moles of calcium per liter. So 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, and if I do the stoic for over here, for every 1.24 times 10 to the minus three moles per liter of calcium fluoride, for every one mole of calcium fluoride, oops, brought the mole there, I get, I produce two moles of fluoride ions. So moles of calcium fluoride, moles of calcium fluoride, so moles per liter of fluoride. So you can see it's gonna be one, one, two, 1 1.24, 1.24, 2.48 because it's doubled. So that's the tricky part, just setting up this table. 
So 2.48 times 10 to the minus 3. So there we go. Now I have my equilibrium amount. And of course, that equilibrium amount represents after time has passed and I've made a uh, saturated solution. So that gets used in the KSP calculation. So KSP, calcium times fluoride. And of course, fluoride has an exponent of two because I have two of them for every one calcium. So 1.24 times 10 to the minus three. Multiply by 2.48 times 10 to the minus three squared. And that gives me 7.63 times 10 to the minus 9. Really small number, right? So again, we're told here that uh, not a huge amount dissolves, but we do have some dissolving leading in that number. All right, we have one more example to do, and I'll, we'll do that in the third video.